60 Minutes Rewind. On Friday, Congress finally passed and President Bush signed into law a financial rescue package in which the taxpayers will buy up Wall Street's bad investments. The numbers are staggering, but they don't begin to explain the greed and incompetence that created this mess. It began with a terrible bet that was magnified by reckless borrowing, complex securities, and a vast, unregulated shadow market worth nearly $60 trillion that hid the risks until it was too late to do anything about them. And it's far from being over. It started out 16 months ago as a mortgage crisis. Then it slowly evolved into a credit crisis. Now it's something entirely different and much more serious. What kind of a crisis is it today? This is a full-blown uh, financial storm and one that comes around perhaps uh, one every 50 or 100 years. This is the real thing. Jim Grant is the editor of Grant's Interest Rate Observer and one of the country's foremost experts on credit markets. He says it didn't have to happen. That this disaster was created entirely by Wall Street itself during a time of relative prosperity. And they did it by placing a trillion dollar bet with mostly borrowed money that the riskiest mortgages in the country could be turned into gold-plated investments. If you look at how this started with the subprime crisis, it doesn't seem to be a good bet to put your money behind the idea that people with the lowest income and the poorest credit ratings are gonna be able to, to pay off their mortgages. The idea that you could lend money to someone who couldn't pay it back is not an inherently attractive idea to the layman, right? However, it seemed to fly with people who were making $10 million a year. With clients clamoring for safe investments with above average return, the big Wall Street investment houses bought up millions of the least dependable mortgages, chopped them up into tiny bits and pieces, and repackaged them as exotic investment securities that hardly anyone could understand. This is actually the security. This is the selling document for the security. So this is We looked at one of them with Frank Partnoy, the a former derivatives broker and corporate securities attorney who now teaches law at the University of San Diego. It's hundreds and hundreds of pages of, of very small print with a lot of detail here. Think anybody ever read this stuff? I doubt very many people read it. These complex financial instruments were actually designed by mathematicians and physicists who used algorithms and computer models to reconstitute the unreliable loans in ways that were supposed to eliminate most of the risk. Obviously, they turned out to be wrong. Why? Because you can't model human behavior with math. How much of this catastrophe had to do with the instruments that, the, that Wall Street created and, and chose to buy? And the, sell. the instruments themselves are at the heart of this mess. They are complex, in effect, mortgage science projects devised by these Nobel track physicists who came to work on Wall Street for the very purpose of creating complex instruments with all manner of, 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 of detailed protocols on who gets paid when and how much. And the complexity of these structures is at the very center of the crisis of credit today. People don't know what they're made up of, how they're going to behave. Right. But it didn't stop the rating agencies like Standard & Poor's and Moody's from certifying the dodgy securities investment grade. And it didn't stop Wall Street from making billions selling them to banks, pension funds, and other institutional investors all over the world. But that was just the beginning of the crisis. What most people outside of Wall Street and Washington don't know is that a lot of the people who bought these risky mortgage securities also went out and bought even more arcane investments that Wall Street was peddling called credit default swaps. And they've turned out to be a much bigger problem. They are private and largely undisclosed contracts that mortgage investors entered into to protect themselves in case their investments went bad. Part of a huge unregulated market that's multiplied the losses. They've already helped bring down three of the biggest firms on Wall Street and threaten the ones that are left. But before your eyes glaze over, Michael Greenberger, a law professor at the University of Maryland and a former director of trading and markets for the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, says they're much simpler than they sound. What is a, a credit default swap? A credit default swap is a contract between two people, one of whom is giving insurance to the other that he will be paid in the event that a financial institution 
or a financial instrument fails. So it, it's an insurance contract? It is an insurance contract, but they've been very careful not to call it that because if it were insurance, it would be regulated. So they use a magic substitute word called a swap, which by virtue of federal law is deregulated. So anybody who was nervous about buying these mortgage-backed securities, these, these CDOs, they would be sold a credit default swap as sort of an insurance policy. A credit default swap was available to them, marketed to them as a risk-saving device for buying a risky financial instrument. But there was a problem. Oh, there was a big problem. What was the problem? Well, the problem was that if it were insurance or, or called what it really is, the person who sold the policy would have to have capital reserves to be able to pay in the case the insurance was called upon or triggered. But because it was a swap and not insurance, there was no requirement that adequate capital reserves be put to the side. Now, who was selling these credit default swaps? Bear Stearns was selling them. Lehman Brothers was selling them. AIG was selling them. You know, the names we hear that are in trouble, City Group was selling them. These investment banks were not only selling the securities that turned out to be terrible investments, they were selling insurance on them? Well, it made, the, it, made it easier to sell the terrible investments if you could convince the buyer that not only were they going to get the investment, but insurance. But when homeowners began defaulting on their mortgages and Wall Street's high-risk mortgage-backed securities also began to fail, the big investment houses and insurance companies who sold the credit default swaps hadn't set aside the money they needed to pay off all the insurance contracts they'd written. Bear Stearns was the first to go under, selling itself to J.P. Morgan for pennies on the dollar. Then Lehman Brothers declared bankruptcy. And when AIG, the nation's largest insurer, couldn't cover its bad debts, the government stepped in with an $85 billion rescue. What role did the credit default swaps play in this financial disaster? They were the centerpiece, really. That's why the banks lost all the money. They lost all the money based on those side bets, based on the mortgages. How big is the market for credit default swaps? We really don't know. There's this voluntary survey that claims that the market is in the range of 50 to 60 or so trillion dollars. It's sort of alarming that in a market that big, we don't even know how big it is to within, say, $10 trillion. But $60 trillion? $60 trillion. I know it seems incredible. It's four times the size of the U.S. debt. But that's the size of the market, according to these voluntary reports. And the market's totally unregulated. And this market is um, almost entirely unregulated. The result is a huge shadow market that may control our financial destiny, and yet the details of these private insurance contracts are hidden from the public, from stockholders, and from federal regulators. No one knows what they cover, who owns them, or whether or not they have the money to pay them off. One of the few sources of information is the International Swaps and Derivatives Association, a trade organization made up of the largest financial institutions in the world. Many of them are the very same companies that created the vast shadow market, lobbied to keep it unregulated, and are now drowning there because of unanticipated risks. The CEO, Robert Pickle, says there's nothing wrong with credit default swaps. The problem was the underlying mortgage securities. Well, there's clearly something wrong with the system if all of these leveraged bets, hidden leveraged bets, caused a collapse in the financial system. It's, it is something that we all need to look at and learn lessons from, and we all need to work together to understand that in the future and, and design a, a structure in the future that, that works more effectively. Yeah, my, my point is the people that made these mistakes are the people you represent in your organization, and many of them sit on the board. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, if they didn't get it right, who would? These, these people understand uh, the nature of these products. They well, understand obviously the they gonna... didn't, or they wouldn't have bought them. They wouldn't have used them. These are very uh, useful transactions, and if people do understand the nature of the risks that they're entering into. Well, if but they're I'm so, much, if they're I'm so sure useful, that... how come they brought down the financial system? Because it, perhaps they didn't understand the underlying risk uh, in the and, and nobody, nobody really saw 
the effects that were going to flow through from the subprime lending situation. The story will continue after this. That chapter is not over, and there is much suspense and fear on Wall Street that there are other big losses out there that have yet to be disclosed. They already dwarf what's been lost on those original risky mortgages. As bad as the mortgage crisis has been, 94% of all Americans are still paying off their loans. The problem is, Wall Street placed its huge bets and side bets with all those fancy securities on the 6% who are not. We wouldn't be in any of this trouble right now if we had just had underlying investments in mortgages. We wouldn't be in any trouble right now. It's all the side bets. It's the side bets. You've got all these big Wall Street firms, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, you've got insurance companies like, like AIG, Merrill lost a ton of money on this. Everybody's lost a ton of money. They're supposed to be the, the smartest investors in the world, and they did it themselves. They did it all on their own. That's the most incredible thing about this crisis is that they pushed the button themselves. They blew themselves up. Now, how much of this was just incompetence on the yeah. part of Wall Street, the people who ran it? The truth is that on Wall Street, a lot of people just weren't very good at their jobs. It's as simple as that. These people were being paid 50 to $100 million a year. Some of them, the guys that were running the places. There is no defending uh, the, uh, a trainee making $45,000 a year would have had the common sense not to bet the firm on mortgage contraptions that no one in the firm actually understood. That is not a deep point to comprehend. Somehow, through, I will call it a criminal neglect and incompetence, the people at the top of these firms chose to look away, to take more risk, to enrich themselves, and to put the shareholders, and indeed, the country itself, ultimately, the country's economy at risk, and it is truly a, not only a shame, it's a crime. We requested interviews with top executives at Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and AIG. They all declined.